Miami Dolphin fans, what's going on? It's Mitchell Rentz here from Chat Sports. We've got a fun show on tap for y'all. We're going to be breaking down the Dolphins' 2021 free agents. This offseason, there's going to be a lot of hype, and there's for good reason. Miami's coming off one of their best seasons in quite some time. you got an up-and-coming team with a great head coach in Brian Flores, and they're going to have some tough decisions to make. Now, the 19 free agents, not the biggest name guys, but honestly, y'all, that's probably a good thing. NFL cap space, $33.3 million. That's seventh most in the National Football League, as I am filming right now. And four picks in the top 50. I hope you all are excited. Hopefully you guys are hitting that subscribe button. Let's get into it. Probably the biggest name when you look at the free agents for the Miami Dolphins this year, and probably the name that's going to get the most buzz in terms of other teams being interested in him as well, it's Ryan Fitzpatrick. This past year made $5.5 million. Then you got the third string quarterback, Jake Rudock, who, no offense to Rudock's not going to get a lot of buzz. Now, he might be an interesting option if the Dolphins want to end up bringing him back. But as it stands right now, you know that Tua is the future. However, you did see the ups and you saw the downs of a rookie quarterback. Now, that's okay. That's going to happen. One of the important things that Miami does need to do this offseason is figure out how you can bring in a veteran quarterback like a Fitz that can really put Tua underneath his arm and help him get through some of those woes that are going to happen in a young quarterback's life. So I don't know if Fitz is going to come back, but I'll be honest, I kind of would like to see it. So here are some 2020 stats. Tua in 10 games, Ryan Fitzpatrick in 9 games. I mean, advantage, it's Fitzy in just about every single stat. Sure, Tua had less interceptions, but let's be real, Fitzpatrick was a lot better under the Chan, Chan Gailey offense. It might be a little bit different now since he decided to resign. So should the Dolphins bring back Fitz? I want you to type R for resign or I want you to type W for let him walk. I think the Miami should try to figure out a way to bring him back, however... I think that Fitz is going to go somewhere else. I think he's going to try to be a starter on another team. If you're telling me to put my money on a place, this might hurt y'all's feelings. I think he actually ends up going back maybe to a team to like the uh, New England Patriots. So I told y'all earlier on to go ahead and subscribe to the Dolphins today show because this is a fast-growing YouTube channel. And Chat Sports, we see how hard y'all are working, but I do want to give you a little bit of a uh, a taste of some other channels that we have here, and kind of, who doesn't like competition, right? So here are some of our other popular YouTube channels that we have at Chat Sports. Here's some big team channels. Cowboys, Raiders, over both 70,000. Then you see the Dolphins today, 8.8 thousand subs. I want you guys to catch the Chiefs. I know you guys can catch the Eagles. The Seahawks, they're moving quickly as well. Bottom line is this, you guys are some diehard fans who love our content here. So we want to continue to make videos, but the way we make videos is for subscribers. So hit the big red button and subscribe and join Chat Sports Shows today. Let's go down to the running backs here. You got Matt Breida, DeAndre Washington. I think we can all agree. <laughs> Matt, Matt Breida just simply didn't work out. $3.26 million. See you, Matt. You're not coming back. DeAndre Washington, I thought, did an okay job filling in when need be. But Miles Gaskins, okay, Miles Gaskin. And then you got Salvon Ahmad. These two running backs, to me, proved that there is no reason to bring back Breida, no reason to bring back DeAndre Washington. And shout out to Studsville for doing as great as he did with the running backs. These are going to be your top two guys for this year. I don't think they do anything in free agency. The real question here is for all Dolphin fans is, should they go out and draft a running back? Do you want to go out and get a guy like, uh, I don't know, Travis Etienne or another top running back like Najee Harris? I'm going to make this the pinned comment on today's video, so scroll on down and let me know. D for draft or P for pass. Jump into the wide receivers now. The best hair on today's video. I know, it's not going to be me. Shout out to Matt Collins, and we got Isaiah Ford as well. They both made around 750 k last season. One of my biggest things, though, for the wide receiver position is this. You have to remember, the Miami Dolphins did not have Alan Hearns, and they did not have Albert Wilson, who decided to opt out earlier this year due to COVID. I'm a strong believer that Albert Wilson's going to be your third receiver, and Alan Hearns could easily be your number two. Plus, how healthy is Preston Williams going to be? I know that Devontae Parker's the number one. That's not going to change anything. And if you want to talk about overall top, I guess, receivers on the team, Mike Gesicki is one of the best receiving tight ends in the National Football League. So for the two free agents that you just saw, 
I don't have a lot of confidence in the Dolphins bringing them back, potentially maybe as a pra practice squad, guys, in terms of depth. But Albert Wilson, Alan Hearns, you can easily put those two guys over top of the Hollands and Ford and think that, guess what, you're going to be doing pretty well. Hopefully you all are doing pretty well with your bets as well, and if you're not, it's all good. I lost a few bets last week, but luckily we got this awesome deal going on where you can lose a few and still make some money. Go to chatsports.com slash bet if you want to bet on the NFL playoff games this weekend. There is nothing more that I am looking forward to on Saturday and Sunday than me just kicking up my feet and watching some NFL football, and there's nothing better than when you also put some money down on it. So here are the games on Saturday. I'm going to take the Bills, I'm taking the Seahawks, and I'm going to go with the Washington football team. Those are going to be the winners in those three games. How about Sunday? Let's march over to Sunday. Give me the Titans, the Saints, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. If you want to bet on the over-unders in these games, if you want to bet on the spreads, if you just want to bet on the outright winners, you can do that thanks to our sportsbook partner, BetUS. But you got to get started at chatsports.com slash bet. And you got to use this promo code down here, Dolphins125. It's the only way you're going to get that 125% deposit bonus. All right, let's get back into some of these free agents before Chatsports makes me a free agent. Here are the offensive line. Ted Karras, Julian Davenport, Adam Pankey. The big name and the one that I really want to focus on here is Karras, who he was your starting center. And when you really take a deeper dive into some of the rankings and some of the grades, let's say from Pro Football Focus, which we'll get to in a sec, Karras is really the only one that I think actually impacts this team. Now, he played basically every single snap this year, and his 65.2 grade from PFF, that actually puts him at 20th out of the 37 centers. In terms of Julian Davenport, he did well when he needed to play. He didn't get too many snaps, a much better pass blocker than run blocker. And then Adam Pankey, I don't know if he's going to end up being uh, back on the team. He's a solid depth player, can do a few different things. But the big name on here, it's definitely Ted. So is the offensive line Miami's biggest weakness? Why for yes and for no? If you're wondering, Mitch, aren't you supposed to be the host? Aren't you supposed to be answering all this stuff? Yeah, I will. Guess what? I do. I think it is a why for yes. But Chat Sports is different. Chat Sports isn't just every other channel on YouTube that only is going to talk to y'all. We want to know what you have to think. You ever see some weird guy walking down the street, he's talking to himself? You know how crazy that guy seems? That's me every single day. You can see how I'm going nuts. I want you all to be weighing in with me. So let me know. Is the O-line the biggest weakness? Why for yes or type N for no. It's time now to get to the defensive side of the football. And since Miami runs a 3-4, 4-3, they mix and match, I decided to put some of these linebackers and defensive linemen, mix them all together. The biggest names on this list that you guys are going to see and point at, Gruger Hill, Vince Beagle, and Landon Roberts. Those are probably the two biggest names, and maybe Devon. So in terms of Vince Beagle, as you all remember, 2.13. He didn't play a single snap this year because back in August, he tore his Achilles. We made a video about it. It's actually one of the very first videos we ever did here at Chat Sports for the Miami Dolphins. But how much of an impact is he going to be able to have, and is he actually going to be healthy? That still remains to be seen. But one of the best things that Miami was able to do is when you have outstanding outside cornerbacks like Xavier Howard and Byron Jones, you're able to bring pressure. And that's actually one of the biggest reasons why you see guys like, honestly, Emmanuel Ogba have the season that he did. But the one player that I definitely want to be able to bring up now is a Landon Roberts. And I know some of y'all were excited about him. He had 61 tackles, but let's just be real. If Miami's smart, they only bring him back to be a depth player. Why? He didn't really have that good of a season. Rated 90th out of 90 linebackers, according to the PFF. That was worse in the National Football League. And it sucks seeing a guy go down with an injury. But he was bad this past season. And he suffered a season-ending knee injury against the Raiders where he was ended up carding, being carted off. I don't know if he's going to be ready for the beginning of the year, but if you're honestly looking at me and said, hey, should we end up bringing him back? I probably will tell you all no. It, it wouldn't be very, very smart. All right, time now to get into the final positions here in our secondary for the Miami Dolphins. Kevon Frazier, Nate Holly, Nick Needham, Jamal Wiltz, or yeah, Jamal Wiltz, and then the punter, yes, because they're people too, Matt Cack. The biggest name on this list that I know y'all are going to be asking me about, it's Nick Needham. Now, did Nick Needham have a good season? No, he, he really didn't. However, Miami really wasn't planning on throwing him into the fire. The reason why he was put out onto the football field and thrown into the fire is because Noah Igbenogany, their first-round pick out of Auburn, 
He was a disaster. He was rated 124th out of 124 cornerbacks, according to Pro Football Focus. Now, the other thing I'll give Needham credit for, he is a tackler. He is terrible in coverage, but that dude likes to tackle. If you want to be able to bring him in and keep him on the roster as a special teams player, that's where he fits best. In terms of covering NFL caliber receivers and tight ends, I'm sorry, that's not his best attribute. So who is the number one player that Miami should re-sign? Go down in the comments section and let us know. They have $33.3 million in cap space. It's going to be an interesting draft class, no doubt about it. And with 19 free agents, they got some tough choices to make. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you made it this far, drop us a like and have a good weekend.